say we're going to do three our 3.5 notes, which is curving lines parallel, um, which essentially is just the converse, if you remember what that word means, is just flipping all of those postulates that you've already learned about those special angles. Um, so the first one we have here is the converse of that corresponding angles postulate, um, which is just saying that if corresponding angles are congruent, then you can determine lines A and B in this picture would be parallel to each other. Um, so if you have information and I said to you, you know, angle one is the same as angle three, then your conclusion could be that lines A and B are parallel to each other. Um, the parallel postulate that you see here, um, this is just saying if you have a line and you have a point not on the line, so the point not on the line in this case would be point P, then what that means is that there exists a line through P, so this line right here that you see, that's going to be parallel to the line M that was already given. Um, so if I, you know, just randomly drew you a picture of a line and I have like point X up here, then you know, even though you don't see a line, that a line exists through point X that would be parallel to the original line that was given. Um, obviously, those lines don't look parallel. That's a bad picture, but that's the, the idea of it. Um, the next one that we have here is all of these angle theorems that you've already learned. They have the converse option, and that just is saying, you know, what you already know is that if lines are parallel, alternate exterior angles are congruent. And now we're, we're reversing that. We're flipping that. We're saying if alternate exterior angles are congruent, your conclusion, lines are parallel. Um, consecutive interior angles, converse. Remember, consecutive interiors are the same thing as same side interior. So again, remember, same side interior, their relationship was supplementary. So if same side or consecutive interior angles are supplementary, your conclusion, lines are parallel. And then our last one here, the alternate interior angles. Remember that if alternate interior angles were congruent, or if lines were parallel, alternate interior angles were congruent. So the converse is if you know that the alternate interior angles are congruent, your conclusion is that lines are parallel. Um, and then this one, we actually, if you remember, we did do this one where we said, you know, that idea if over here, if line R is perpendicular to line P, which it is with that box, then the conclusion was it also had to be perpendicular to Q if P and Q were parallel. Now we're just flipping that. So if you know, like if these two boxes right here are here, if you have a transversal and it's perpendicular to two lines, then your conclusion is those two lines have to be parallel to each other. Okay, so we're going to do um, an example of this. So given the following information, determine which lines, if any, are parallel. State the postulate or theorem that justifies your answer. So we have, they tell us angle 2 is congruent to angle 8. And so we're looking for, are angle 2 and angle 8 a special type of angle? And they are. Um, they are alternate interior angles. And so we know, based on right here, alternate interior angles are, alternate interior angles converse is if the alternate interior angles are congruent, you can conclude lines are parallel. So the lines that would be parallel in this case, so if you get confused, if you highlight angle 2 and then highlight angle 8, remember the line that they both have is your transversal. So in this case, line L is my transversal, so the other two lines are A and B. So line A would be parallel to line B. And that reason would be our alternate interior angles converse theorem. And I'm going to have, I'm going to run out of room here. So hopefully you guys can follow along. All right, let's go to angle three congruent to angle 11. 
if you look, angle three and 11, those are corresponding angles. And if corresponding angles are congruent, then we know lines are parallel. So again, if you're not sure, you highlight the lines that make up angle 11, highlight the lines that make up angle three, then you can tell A is your um, transversal, and then the two lines that would be parallel would be line L parallel to line M, and that would be the corresponding angles um, converse postulates. And I'm going to abbreviate um, when I can. All right, next we have angle 12 congruent to angle 14. So here's angle 12 and here's angle 14. And those are alternate exterior angles. And if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then lines are parallel. So we know the lines here, if you highlight, the lines that form 12 and 14, this one stands out. M would be the transversal. So the other two lines that are parallel would be A and B. And this would be the alternate exterior um, angle converse theorem. Next, we have angle one congruent to angle five. So one and five, those would be corresponding angles. If I highlight, we know that if corresponding angles are congruent, then lines are parallel. So here, line L is my transversal. So that makes A and B parallel to each other. And that's that corresponding angles converse postulate. So we're just we're adding converse to this because it's just the reverse, being able to say lines are parallel now. Okay, the measure angle 8 plus the measure angle 13 is 180. So they're talking about angle 8 and angle 13. And the only angles that should be adding up to 180 would be same side interior. And these would be an example of same side interior angles. So here's my transversal. That's the line they both have. So my parallel lines would be line L parallel to line M. And that would be our, you can either call it consecutive interior angle converse theorem, or you could call it your same side interior as well, converse. Just make sure you're remembering to put converse because we aren't trying to show that the angles are congruent like we were last time. We are trying to show lines are parallel. And then your last one, angle eight, congruent to angle six. And if you recall, those angles are vertical angles and there's nothing that says if angles are vertical and they're congruent, lines are parallel. So in this case, no lines would be parallel based on that information. All right, now we're gonna find the measure of angle MRQ, which is this angle here, so that, so we want line A, and line B to be parallel. So for those lines to be parallel, if you look here at the two angles they've given us, these angles are alternate interior angles. And if I want lines to be parallel, I need these angles to be congruent. So for this to work, I need their measures to be equal. So I'm gonna set these equal to each other. And then I'm going to solve. I'm going to subtract 5x over. And I'm going to add 21. So x would be 14. And then to find the measure of the angle, I'm going to plug in my x. So 5 times 14 would be 70 plus seven is 77. And there's my angle measure. Okay, let's try another one like this. This time we wanna find Y so that E 
is parallel to F. So I need these two lines to be parallel. 4y plus 10 is here. Um, and if you notice, this 4y plus 10 and this 90 degrees right here, they don't have a special relationship. But what we know is that this angle beside it has to be 90, right? Because that's a linear pair and they both have to add up to 180. And this 90 box and my 4y plus 10, those are an example of corresponding angles. So these angles are corresponding angles. And if I want lines to be parallel, I need corresponding angles to be congruent, which means I need their measures to be equal. So I'm going to set those measures equal to each other. So I'm going to subtract 10. And then I'm going to divide by 4. So y is equal to 20. OK, the last one is a word problem. It says, in order to move in a straight line with maximum efficiency, rowers' oars should be parallel. Refer to the photo at the right. Is it possible to prove that any of the oars are parallel? If so, explain how. If not, explain why not. So here's what we have. We have this angle right here is 110, and this angle right here is 80. Um, so I think that. You know, it's important to remember that this angle beside this 110, this is a straight line, would be 70 right here because those are a linear pair, right? They have to add up to 180. And so now if you look, this 80 degrees here and this angle here have a special relationship. Those are corresponding angles. And if lines are going to be parallel, then corresponding angles have to be congruent. And in this case, they are not congruent. So those ors right here, we're talking about um, these ors right here, could not be parallel to each other because corresponding angles are congruent. Um, so is it possible to prove that any of the ors are parallel? No. And then you can just say, um, corresponding angles are not congruent, so the ors can't be parallel. And you can use symbols for parallel. And that concludes 3.5. Here is your homework assignment that you can get written down. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, you can start working on your homework.